Hi everyone, and welcome back to the third class of class 8 mathematics. We will be starting a new chapter today, and this chapter deals with datas. Now this chapter's name is, it's uh, chapter 5. The name of the chapter is data handling. In our day-to-day -day life, we always come across datas. Data from this, that, that. For example, you ask a person what his or her name is. You're collecting data. You know, and how you arrange it is up to you. Now, all these data that we collect, uh, we will be organizing them now in this chapter. In this chapter, we'll be dealing mainly with data collection and making of tables and drawing of graphs. Now, before we go into that, we will look at some types of some types of uh, graphs that we have studied and will be studying here on the first the first type of graph the first type of graph is called pictograph pictograph the second Let's go, all right, before we go there, let me show, show you what a pictograph actually is. We have done this in class seven, so I hope you will recollect and remember, try to remember. If not, you can look back, go back and look at your textbooks and uh, notebooks that you have uh, used last, in the last academic session. Now, a pictograph generally looks like this, where we use pictures to denote as a show data. Now here, what we have taken example is, uh, what example we've taken is apple sold. That means how many apples we sold in January, in February, in March, in April. Now look here, there's an apple shown here. So this single apple, if you look down, you will see that this single apple denotes that 10, uh, denotes 10 apples. That means if I show one apple here, it means 10 apples. If I show one, two, three, four, it means 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 apples. Likewise, if half an apple is shown, it means five apples. Half of 10 is five. So this is a exam, as an example of a pictograph. And here in this pictograph, we can understand that in January, 10 apples were sold. In February, 40 apples. In March, now look carefully, in March, we have two apples and half. That means 10, 20, and five, 25. 25 apples in March. In April, we have 10, 20, 20 apples. So this is all about pictograph. The next graph that we're going to learn about is bar graph. I am sure we have learned about this also in the, previous, in the last academic session. This is a simple bar graph, an example that I'm going to show you. It is called a bar graph because we use bars to represent data here. Now, if you look at this, we are going to look at favorite, uh, we are going to look at the data or favorite color of students. Now, <clears throat> students, there may, there may be, you know, uh, as many students, but let's look at this uh, graph. The first thing that we have to look at is the one given below on the line, horizontal line. This denotes colors, red, yellow, blue, green and the vertical line denotes number of students. That means, for example, if I take red and the numbers are given here, the red reaches till 10. That means 10 students, like, uh, 10 students have their favorite color as red. Similarly, yellow reaches till five, so five students have yellow, uh, have yellow as their favorite color. Blue, it reaches till 20, that means 20 students favorite color is blue. Similarly, green, 15 students. So this is just a recap of the lessons that you've already learned. And the final bar graph. This will be something new. Double bar graph. I'm sure you have not heard of this double bar graph. Now, as the word name itself states, Double. That means in one particular graph, you're going to have two two bar graphs or bars, two two bars for every data. 
So if you look carefully at this, these are the test marks of a student, of students. Now, this green one indicates practice test. This purple indicates test. So normal test, actual test. Now, Ariel, she scored 60 marks in the green one. It reaches still 60, so she scored 60 marks in practice test. Whereas after she practiced and appeared her exam, test, real test, she reached 70. That means in the practice test, she got 60, but when uh, she gave the real test, she got 70. Likewise, Sai, Teklek, and Tara, they all have, all their marks have been depicted in this manner. So this is a double bar graph. We'll be coming across this in the uh, later exercises. Now, these are the three types of graph. Pictograph, bar graph, double bar graph. Now, the next topic will be organizing. Organizing data. Now, simply collecting data and keeping it aside, all jumbled up. It's not going to make any meaning. Maybe it'll make meaning, but it'll be very confusing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to organize data. We're going to organize them in such a manner that uh, one look, with one look, we can understand what it actually means. So when we organize data, the first thing that we do is collect data. Without collecting data, we cannot organize it. Now, without any data, there's no need, I mean, the, the need wouldn't arise to organize it. The next is to find the frequency. Frequency. Frequency means a number of times a particular entry or data repeats itself. For example, I have some marks. 50, one student got 50, one student got 52, one student got 50 again, one student got 51, again 52 and 52. Now, frequency means the number of times a single data is repeating. That means one, two. 50 is appearing two times. That means the frequency of 50 is two. Now look at 52. It is repeating three times. That means 50 is repeating three times. 51, just one time. So this is about frequency. Frequency simply means repetition of the same data, same entry, right? Uh, the next one will be, well, we will be grouping. Grouping of data, we will look into that in detail later. But grouping in data means we can organize data like this. Zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. Now with this example again, if I put, let's say these are math marks. Some got three, some got 21, some got uh, 81, some got 70. So if we have this data, we will make it into class interval because if we individually select the, uh, the marks of each and every student, it's going to be very tough. We cannot get a quick survey. Now, if I want, as a teacher, I want to make a quick survey of where the student majority of the student stands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this data. Directly, I'm going to write from zero to 10, let's see how many students. Zero to 10, we have only three. So one student got zero to 10, between zero and 10. Now, when we go zero and 10, we do not count 10. We will check only till zero and nine. 10, we will count from here. So likewise, 10 to 19 here, 20 to 29, all right. So this is grouping of data. Now, if you look for 10 to 20, there's no student who got 10 to 20, zero. 20 to 30, we have one student. So one, likewise, it'll go like that. This is called grouping of data. Now, <clears throat> after all this is done, we will be drawing a graph. Now with this data, we'll be drawing a graph and this graph will, is also called as histogram. In this histogram, data will be organized. They will be arranged in such a way that uh, you know there's no gap in between um, uh, there's no gap in between datas just like we did zero to ten now after ten it should come eleven here but there's no gap okay 
there should be no gap. So directly 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, it'll go on like that. We'll uh, come to this later on, we'll understand that later on. Now, uh, there is a less chances of using this, but there are sometimes when we draw a bar graph, we draw the x-axis, the y-axis, but sometimes we may see something like this. Something like this. This, in the, uh, this is called a jagged line. Jagged line. Jagged line. Now, this is, the, its main purpose is to show, for example, I have some datas. And this, those datas are starting from 20 onwards. Record starts only from 20. 0 to 19, no record. So, I will directly write 20 here, and I will put this check line. That means 0 to 19, there is no information. I'm skipping directly. Okay, this is uh, not compulsory. It's up to you if you want to use it. All right. <clears throat> These are about uh, what we have learned were about graphs. So the first one is pictograph. The second is bar graph. The third was double bar graph. Now, the next thing that we're going to learn is pi chart. Pi chart is nothing but a circle representing datas with slices. All right, this is just a representation. If <clears throat> Let's have a look at the chart. Now, this is an example of a pie chart. A pie chart where what we ate, or what you ate, what I ate yesterday in dinner, lunch, breakfast, it can be any of them. Now, this blue indicates meat. Red indicates ice cream. The green indicates vegetables. Purple indicates bread. Now, blue. Blue portion, 43%. It indicates that 43% of the meal, the dinner, the lunch was meat. 29% indicates that ice cream. Ice cream uh, constituted of 29% of the food. And then vegetables, 14%. And bread, it consisted of, or constituted of 14% only. Now, this pie chart is used to depict data as, just as bar graphs. There's no difference. The only difference is between uh, the circle and the bars. Now, for pie chart, uh, let's take an example. For example, I have something like this. Let's say, we'll just take three instances. All right. Let's say this is the example. Now, uh, we will consider favorite sport. Let's say football, uh, volleyball, and basketball. And number of students. All right. We, ha we will first draw a graph where we will indicate <coughs> the number of students, percentage of students who like football, who like volleyball and who likes basketball. Now let's say that 50% likes football. Another 25% likes volleyball. Another 25% likes basketball. That means 50 plus 25, 75, 75 plus 25, 100%. Total 100%. Right. Now, let's say that this 50% right, likes football. Another 25, that means the other half is 50%. Half of 50% is 25, 25. Now this is for volleyball. This is for basketball. It can be changed also. It doesn't matter how you, how, where you put it, as long as the data entry is correct. Now in pie chart, to draw this, to draw this in, uh, in a circle, to make it exact, we have to find a certain thing called central angle. Now, this central angle, this central angle 
is found in this manner. 50% out of 100 into the whole circle. The whole circle, the angle of the whole circle is 360. You, are, you take a compass, start from any point, you go around and come back to the same place. That indicates that it is uh, 360 degree. Now, when you do this, uh, when you solve this, you will get, you can cancel 0, 0, 0, 0, you cancel, right. Now you multiply 5 into 36, you get 5 into 6, 30, 5 into 15, 18. 180 degree. Now look, 180 degree is a straight line. 180 degree is a straight line. So this is the indication that this part is 180 degree. Similarly, for this, you can find 25 by 100 into 360. 360, whatever you get is your answer. 25 by 100 into 360. So similarly, we will be solving questions like this. And the more we solve, the better you will understand. And finally, the last topic. The last concept that we have to understand is about chances. Sometimes you go out, you, you know, early in the morning you dress up and you plan to go out. And you look in the, up in the sky, it's cloudy. Now you are confused. Should I take an umbrella or should I go just like that? You know, you're confused. You take chances. You don't take, it rains. You take, it doesn't rain. So these chances, we're going to learn about chances and probability. So what we are basically going to do is probability. Probability simply means chance of occurrence, chance of outcomes. We do not know what outcome it will come, but we can at least find out the probability of how many times it can come, how the outcome will come. So <clears throat> this probability is found out using a particular formula. So number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes. Outcomes. All right. For instance, since I don't have a coin with me, if I toss this, toss this in the air and say, you know, what are the chances of uh, this duster showing a black face first or the other side? You know, if you flip a coin, if you flip a coin, what are the chances of getting a head or a tail? You know, that is determined by this formula. For example, you have a coin. A coin has one head, one tail. Now, if you think about the number of times this head will come. For example, you throw a coin, you check the probability of head coming. See, in one coin, there are no two heads, right? There's just one head. So only one head will come, even if it comes out. So if you toss a coin and a head comes out, it will come only once. So what I'm trying to say is, for a head to come out as we toss a coin, the chance is only one, only one time. For tail to come out, it's also one time. Right, the expected number of outcomes is for head is one. And the total outcome, it can come as a head, it can come as a tail. So the total outcome is one, two. So you can write like this, flipping a coin, one coin. The number of chances of head coming is one by two probability. Similarly for tail, one by two probability. I hope you have understood. We will try to learn this uh, better in the uh, exercises that are to follow. All right, um, if you will turn with me to page number 76. Page number 76, we will skip question one. We will go directly to question number two. Let me read the question. Page number 76, exercise 5.1. The shoppers who come to a departmental store are marked as M, man, uh, M for man, W, W for woman, B, B for boy, and G, G for girl. Now this 
has been given the the following list gives the shoppers who came during the first hour in the morning. So shoppers came in varieties, men, women, boys, boy and girl. Now data has been given. If you look at the question, question number two, these data have been given. We're going to organize them, make a frequency distribution table using tally marks. Draw a bar graph to illustrate it. Now we're going to make a frequency table we're going to make a frequency ta distribution table. So what we're going to do is, first we're going to write shoppers. Shoppers were men, women, boys, girls. Now we're going to write tally marks and uh, number of shoppers. Number of shoppers. Now, let's look at this. Let's see how many times M is repeated in this question. M, M for man. So the first, we shall count together. M, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are 15 M. So in tally, uh, the way of depicting 15 is like this. One, two, three, four, and five. For every five, you will strike, you will draw a line, uh, strike uh, the numbers, uh, the digits, sorry. Uh, five, so six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Here you will write in numbers, 15. So the next is women. Women, let's count. One, two, three, uh, for W, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So we have 28. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So tally 28. And boys, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boy only 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it'll be 5. And girls, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you have this frequency distribution table. Now in the end, you have to add up all these to make sure that your tally is correct. Eight plus five is 13, 13, 28, 30, two, three, four, sorry, two, three, sorry. Eight, 13, 18, 20, Two, four, five, six. So your total data collected is 60. Now with this, we're going to draw a bar graph. The bar graph will look something like this. We're going to draw something like this. First, we're going to mark M for man, women, boy, girl. This shows shopper or shoppers. And here we're going to see the intervals. If we start from one, one, two, three, four, it'll go a long way. So we're going to go in fives. I'll start with five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28 is the biggest number. So I'll go till 30. This shows number of shoppers. So let's look at M. M is 15. So your bar will reach till 15 and it'll drop like this. This is your bar graph representing number of men, men shoppers. Next is 28. So 
25, 26, 27, 28, it'll come somewhere around here. So we can draw another bar to represent this. Similarly for boy 5, so 5 is here, we can draw like this. And finally for girl 12, 10, 11, 12, it will come somewhere around here. So we will estimate and draw like this. Now male was 15, women were 28, boys were 5 and girls 12. This is your bar graph. With this, the, uh, the problem has been solved. First, we drew a frequency distribution table. All right, this figure is frequency distribution table and this figure is your bar graph. So this is for question number two. Let's move on to the next question. I hope this is clear. Please practice so that you can understand better. If you don't understand at one go, please practice. Practice makes a man perfect. All right, question number three. The weekly wages, bracket in rupees, of 30 workers. There are 30 workers in the factory and their weekly wages are given. In one week, they earn this much. 830, 835, all these data are given of how much they earn in a week. Now, they're asking us to using tally marks, make a frequency table with intervals. Now, there, there is a class interval here. They have mentioned to use 800 to 810, 810 to 820, the previous grouping that I was talking about, class intervals, these intervals. Now, they're asking us to use this to uh, make a frequency table. So, we will check. We will start writing. First, we will write uh, the class interval. First, we will write the class intervals. Then, we will write tally and frequency. Frequency means how many times a particular number is occurring, a particular entry is occurring. So as they have given, let's start with 800 to 810, 810 to 820, 820 to 830, 830 to 840. Let, please make sure that to look at the numbers and see which, how, which is the highest number, till what number it is given. So. Here we can see till 898, till 898. So we will write till 900. 840, 850, 850, 860, 60, 870, 70, 890, sorry, 80, 900. Now, for, to start with tally, first let's find the frequency. How many times, how many numbers come between 800 and 809? So if we look at the chart, at the, sorry, at the numbers given, 800 to 810, we have three. 804, 808, 806. So it'll be one, two, three. For next, we have from 810 to 820, we have two. Please make sure that when you count from 800 to 810, you don't include uh, 810. You will count only till 809. After that, 810 will be counted in the next interval. 810 to 820, there, here eight, till 819. From here, 820 will start. All right. Now, similarly, we have 
for this 8.20 to 8.30 interval, we have 1. So tally will be only 1. For 8.30 to 8.40, we have 9. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. We have, we have 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 8.50 to 8.60, we have only 1. So 1 occurrence. 8.60 to 8.70, we have 3. 1, 2, 3. And 870 to 880, we have only one, one. 880 to 890, we have one. So tally will also be one. 890 to 900, we have four. So it will be one, two, three, four. Now this is the frequency table of the daily wages of workers. You can check the answers. You can try counting and check the answers. And you can look at the question and look for uh, uh, the, you can, uh, you can try counting them by yourselves as you practice. So it'll come as three, two, one, nine, five, one, three, one, one, four. So this is your frequency distribution table using telemarks. They have not mentioned us to, uh, they have not asked us to draw a bar graph. So uh, with this, we will conclude our session for today. Uh, so far we have learned about uh, types of graphs. One is pictograph, second is a bar graph, third is double bar graph. And after that, we have learned about pie chart. Pie chart, we are still yet to go into exercise uh, about pie chart. And the last we have learned about probability. Please do keep uh, practicing, keep to uh, do, uh, you know, study and try to recollect whatever we have studied so that we can continue smoothly in the next class. Uh, it was a pleasure teaching you. I hope you all have a good time until we meet again. Thank you.